Join us on the phone on Wednesday. He, of course, doing that show on Saturday night at Playhouse Square as that Fat Rascal tour. I think there's still some tickets available. You can buy them. Uh, we gave a bunch away last week, but he will join us on Wednesday. And your Cleveland Guardians, done. Calling it a career for Tito Francona. And Miggy Cabrera, too, quite frankly. I mean, they played uh, the Tigers uh, when I was on in Detroit for a number of years. Miggy Cabrera was a, a semi-regular guest on my program. And um, I enjoyed his take on things very much. So Miguel Cabrera with the Tigers retires. Tito Francona calls it a career. And I, I think the Guardians ended up losing that last game. I didn't really pay that close attention to it. But, yeah, 5-2. to two. Uh, they're in Detroit, the final series of the 2023 uh, season. Tigers beat them on Saturday, eight to nothing. But the Guardians got that first game out of the way, seven to five. So, um, Guardians end the season at 76 and 86. I don't know if they ever broke 500, but um, they did a few times at earlier points in the season. But yeah, been a minute. Been a minute. So your Braves and your Orioles are the um, two best teams in Major League Baseball, and, and they will, uh, I guess, it, unless you're an expat or something, you probably don't have, uh, you, you don't really have a dog in that fight. A baseball playoff season. Um, my uh, White Sox crapped the bed. There's really not much to be proud of uh, with my hometown sports teams these days. Whew. But you still have to be a booster. Cleveland Browns fans know this. Cleveland Cavaliers fans know this. Uh, Cleveland Indians slash Guardians fans know this. So I'm not telling you anything new. Wednesday, don't freak out. By the way, they have announced that there will be a massive nationwide phone alert. An EAS test or something that will go out on everyone's phone Around 2.20 on Wednesday afternoon, um, it won't go out on Pound Cake's phone, but it will go out on every other phone. I don't know why that is. You have any idea why that is? I, what about the what about <laughs> I know why. Going off? <laughs> what, what do you know? Re re reset why it won't go. There's going to be a nationwide emergency alert test. Mm -hmm. A neat, if you will. And it's going to send everyone's phones off on Wednesday around 2.20, about 20 minutes into the program. Everyone's phone is going to go off. So they're trying to get the word out, hey, don't freak out when this thing goes. We're doing a nationwide test of this system. And all I mentioned was, the article I had read, is that it was going to be every phone except yours. And I wasn't sure why that was. I well, wondered if you had gotten any uh, communication from uh, the FCC or... To send it Wednesday at two twenty. Yeah, Wednesday at two twenty. Everyone but my phone. I, that's the note I read. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know why. Mm. Why? I can think of one specific reason. Do tell. I mean, listen. I don't know if that's got anything to do with why, because that means a lot of people wouldn't. Hey, I'm a less children. That means a lot of people wouldn't get that alert. But it goes back to the 50s. I mean, that's obviously not with cell phones, but, you know, these kinds of national alerts go way, way back. But, you know, it's like when you get an amber alert in the middle of the night and you crap your bed because you don't know what's happening. You wake from a deep sleep and it's just uh, uh, they're looking for a, a toddler in a Chevy Caprice barreling down 90 West. Cell phones will get the warning as a tone, a vibration, and a text message. So um, we're going to get that on Wednesday. Now, we might, maybe we'll get it in Spanish. You know, eagle-eared listeners to this show ask me all the time, hey, I listen to the show on the iHeartRadio app. Why are half my advertisements in Spanish? Well, because we have a very uh, broad and deep uh, Latino listenership. And so when they uh, try to reach that portion of our audience, you want to give them the uh, bilingual commercials. We were running, uh, this show was running a, an advertisement pretty heavily among our Pittsburgh listeners 
for a program called Black Love, which I assume had something to do with Jimmy Butler's hairdo. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I don't know if that's what it was. I thought he was st- starting a band. <laughs> My Chemical Free Throw Mance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Butts. Come on, man. I, no, I love what he does every love year. Love him. Because he does this for the Media Day photos. So yep. last year he did like the big crazy braids. And he has fun with it. This year he did like the emo hair. Yeah. Great. And then that's the picture they have to use of him all year in all their promo stuff. So it was, he had the three lip piercings, yeah. he had the nose pierce, he had it's the spikes great. in the eyebrow. I think it's hilarious. He looks like a roadie for Cameo. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, whatever. My daughter was excited because uh, I mentioned to her that they have renewed SpongeBob SquarePants for a 15th season over there at Nickelodeon. And I have to think... And this ties back in quite nicely to Pound Cake's sports break from the week before last. I have to think that it was in no small part to uh, Cincinnati Reds' Joey Votto doing the French accent. Whether or not they're going to use him in the new season, I don't know. But at least they've got somebody, you know, with all these performer strikes going on, that may be something now that baseball season is over. I don't know if the Reds are looking at any postseason play. but That might be something for him to... Look into. It is here we find the submarine habitat known as Bikini Bottom. Let us observe now as the sun rises on a new nautical day. Mm hmm. So I don't know if they'll use that. I hope they do. That would be the smart move. SpongeBob has been on for over 20 years. I was going to say, I know I was watching it when I was a kid, and now the younger generation, like my nieces and nephews are all like watching it yeah well people are still every every uh, generation you know kids in from the aughts every generation seems to have a spongebob phase it's kind of a rite of passage as far as animated shows go because it just it must just it taps into something in a kid's brain there's a lot of screaming and it's a lot of you know but the they're launching season 14 next month so they have just announced ahead of that hey we're gonna do another season now the guy who in in, uh, created spongebob died some years ago steven hillenberg had like a bacterial infection or i I don't know what he had but he's been dead for a while but the new season will be 26 episodes they will celebrate the 25th anniversary of the first episode next year so if you want to feel old that's a pretty good way to do it my kids have never lived in a world without SpongeBob. Without SpongeBob. Yeah. Well, I didn't they all even, love it. I, I wasn't even aware that it was still being produced. I didn't know that that show was... They go I don't years know now, though. I guess. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, know it's been around were... for 26 years. They've done 15 seasons. So yeah. it's on that HBO Game of Thrones Soprano schedule. We're like, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. We, we want to put out a quality product. We want to make sure it's top notch. It's so basically one wait. of the... For viewership, it's basically propping up... Paramount Plus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be what each of these streaming platforms relies on is like one thing that people will watch again and again. Uh, Disney Plus, it's The Simpsons. With uh, Paramount Plus, it's SpongeBob. Peacock is The Office. Max, I think, is Friends. Like the, oh, is it really? It's all these shows or Friends and Sopranos. Retro programming. Yeah, but it's all this stuff from decades ago that people are still watching again and again and again. Well, because you know that old shows are good. You don't know if the new ones are going to be any good. You go, well, am I going to waste my time watching this when it might stink? I know those are good. I've watched them before. They still make me laugh. You know, last night Fox premiered the 35th uh, season of The Simpsons and the 14th season of Bob's Burgers. It's crazy that Bob's Burgers is in 14 seasons. I agree. Uh, John Benjamin could not be more pleased. (laughs) Uh, You know, I mean, Archer just ended. I mean, or it's airing its final season. So Archer's going away. And that did, what, 11 or 12 seasons, Yeah, 11 seasons, I think. But to be able to do a voice, and again, you know, these people aren't making Simpsons money on these shows, but when you have a gig 
you're still going to make good money mm -hmm. for what the job requires and how long the shows have been on. And for how much they need you to actually go to work. Yeah. It's not like they're working every week. They write all the shows, then they do the recordings in about a month or two, and then they wait for the next season. I think Pound Cake is really doing himself a disservice by not auditioning for animated voice roles. Oh, I plan to do that for sure. But you plan to do that. There's there's a guy that I am like a connection with on LinkedIn and he is I don't know, I think he works for an agency or he's like some type of coach and I'm about to message that dude and just get into voice acting cuz it seems fun. Um I don't know if I could do it full time, but oh god, that would be I, I, I don't know. I think it's just an extinction of my, my talents. I don't know. What was our cartoon we made up all those years ago? It was like mac and cheese? Something like that, <laughs> yeah. Cheese, cheese, where are you? Because I've, I've been told for years that, years that I have like a cartoony voice. What? And uh, <laughs> just playing different characters would be fun. Mm hmm You could play an evil guy. Yep, you play, play a macho a guy. <laughs> That's so funny. You, you can play, play a horse. A horse. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can play a goat. <laughs> cow, right? Yeah, yeah, you can play a cow too. Moo. <laughs> a depressed cow. <laughs> you play a wolf. <laughs> cow kicks barnyard. Mm -hmm. You could play a whale. <laughs> God, bless America. That's, that's very SpongeBob ass right there. Yeah, why not? So, you know, why did the, nobody's going to be foleying animals anymore? They could just come to you. I'm down. That's your that. hook, your area of expertise. Uh, could be that. I think it's so funny that they, they had a commercial. I don't know if it's still around, but it's like, uh, it was uh, this jingle for this toy or something called zoo pals like ribbit ribbit zoo pals oink oink zoo pals oh no it was it was a plate it was a plate that had different animals on it and zoo pals makes eating fun that's what it was and it always stuck in my head i'm like this is the sound effects that people have for animals it's so like if you write out the sound effect it's weird to like act yeah because zoo pals was a thing a long time ago i think they brought them back zoo pals makes eating fun Ribbit, ribbit, zoo pals. Mm -hmm. Oink, oink, zoo pals. Well, send that in. Just run that off and send it into the agency. And see what <laughs> was I even making a, a animal sound those last no, huh? couple noises? Who knows? What was that? Yeah, those are all yours. No, I know those were me, that was me, but what what was the last part? <laughs> You're oinking? It wasn't an oink. Oh. The, the, I don't know. just your regular sound effect. The very end. Like it sounded like I was swimming through mud or something. <laughs> Maybe you were. <laughs> no. Swimming through mud. Yeah, Pound Cake got his audition. <laughs> All right, we're going to need you to uh, act like you're jumping into a pool. I don't know if it would be an audition. I think they would ask me to send in a demo in which I would have to, I'm guessing I would Try your act versatility. out different, yeah, different scenarios. Okay, you are running from a serial killer. He's chasing you. Ah! You know, something like that. <laughs> He's trying to kill me. Ah! He's a serial killer. <laughs> Uh, I, this is this is gonna be something. I like that he overstates things too. Like he's a serial killer. <laughs> he's a serial killer. <laughs> he, Pound cake likes to to give the exposition, mm -hmm. and I'm running from him. It requires I'm less writing. From... I'm running from a serial killer who's trying to kill me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this guy's trying to. This serial killer is trying to make me the next one in his serial of killing people. <laughs> oh. Pound cake, why are you running? Ah, I'm running from a serial killer. <laughs> Classic pound cake. <laughs> Sucking it dry. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, listen. Uh, when you connect with that guy on um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn to uh, quote Dick from Dayton, let us know how it goes. I will. Uh, yeah. Speaking of LinkedIn, how was the Workaholic show? 
interesting. Uh, when we met the guys, they were like, hey, do you like it? And Gwen goes, smell like farts. Uh, <laughs> it really did. Uh, they said, yeah, we got a farty crowd. It was fine. Uh, the, Very party the, crowd. The workaholics <laughs> guys do a podcast called This Is Important. Now, we don't listen to the podcast, and this was a live podcast taping. So we'd never heard it before, but we like those guys. We liked workaholics a lot, and so we did the show and the meet and greet after, and it was the first time I had been back, literally, I, I don't think I realized at the time, but it was the first time I'd been back to the Masonic since we did the 10th Alan Cox Show comedy tour. So I hadn't been back there since 2019. I don't know that that's the, and again, anytime there's a um, podcast recording, I would assume, uh, it's a lot of inside jokes, right? Because the people who yeah, listen you need some to context, it, it's yeah. like this show too. We've got our own. So it kind of, the only thing that it kind of took me out of is because is it's, it's, it's like what we do, you know? It was weird to be on the other side of that. Where these guys are just, I mean, obviously, they, they, it wasn't like they had prepared something. But then at the end, they did this whole thing where they were, like, all dressed like wizards and they were rapping. And the acoustics for something like that were just god-awful. So you could kind of couldn't tell what was going on. But they were nice. It was cool. I mean, it was, a, it was a good night. It was pretty packed out. It was good. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. But I don't go to podcast tapings. You know what I'm saying? Because like, well, I don't I, even think they, that doesn't like, thrill me. That's not. I, a, I feel like when they do live podcasts, it's they don't even record it. They only usually put those out. They just do it. It's like a one-off show for that city. Maybe Blake was re was recording. He's like, we'll cut that out later or whatever. Okay. So I, I think a lot of these maybe, guys. May, maybe some do. I know some will do like their live podcast, but they won't put out the live episodes. Or they'll make them like a Patreon special or something. Yeah, like maybe. That. I don't. I don't yeah. know what they'll do. Again, I'd. I'd never heard. Uh, I'd never heard the the podcast. But I like those guys a lot. Um. So yeah, it was. It was fine. They were nice. It was entertaining. Well, then that's great. Sure. They um discovered a new. No, they didn't discover, but they crowned a new Miss USA. And apparently, nobody could remember her name, and so they just kept referring to her as Utah. Hmm. <laughs> Noela Voigt is her name. She wants to, um, she's a Venezuelan American. And uh, the pageant was Friday night. And I don't know if they I couldn't remember her name. Maybe they didn't have the notes. Maybe they, I don't, it's not that hard of a name to pronounce, but they just kept screaming out Utah when they would talk about her. And now Miss USA 2023 is... They usually say Miss Utah, just going yeah, Utah. That's it. Or, or you know, congratulations, Noelia Miss Voigt from, or Miss yeah, Voigt from Utah, mm -hmm. or from Utah. No, I don't know what's her first name. No Noelia, no Noelia, Noelia, or, Noelia yeah. Voigt. I don't know who the hosts are, but boy, they kept screaming out. That's the new Miss USA, ladies and gentlemen. What an amazing night! That's right. Congratulations to all. You did it again. Good night, everyone. Utah. Boy, they really, maybe the state Utah. of Utah paid them to keep working the name in. Maybe it was some spawn con. But yeah, Utah, you think you'd want your name out there. It was down to her and, I don't know, somebody else. Uh, but um, that will air uh, sometime in the future. Miss Teen USA, of course, went to New Jersey because why not? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some uh, people out there in our nation don't have maps. And uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should... Uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our 